Hi everyone, it's Justin. I'm currently working on the creative direction that I want for this upcoming house renovation. Interestingly, some parts of this house date back to the Renaissance period, which means 500 years old, like elements like this stone arch here are original from that period, which is crazy. It was a master house, but within a village very much in the countryside. So the way it originally looked like was probably somewhere between a peasant farm on one side and a bourgeois home maybe on the other side. It's tricky because that category in interior design history is not well documented at all. So I took this challenge as an excuse to go around Provence and visit all sorts of castles and houses renovated to get some inspiration. I have not wasted a single weekend since the last vlog. First, I went to Grignon in the north of Provence. So this is a typical view of Provence. You see all the right trees, the tiles, roofs. Very typical view. It's also on the list of les plus beaux villages de France, the most beautiful villages in France. Today, I'm going to visit Grignon and the castle of Grignon, famous for the Marquise de Sévigné and her letters a big piece of literature history in France. Grignon is also famous for their ancient roses. They have breeds that were technically almost extinct, but they found seeds in the archive and put them together, managed to resurrect the breeds. So the village is one big botanical garden as well, and it's really pretty. Grignon is pretty. But it's hot, eh? Oui. <laughs> 12 p.m. noon, I'm gonna look for a place in the shade, I think. <laughs> Wait until 2 p.m. and then continue. <laughs> this one is called La Grand Rue. It's not that big, <laughs> but it leads to the castle. Is this a chateau I'm seeing? The castle of Grignon is a masterpiece of Renaissance architecture. Ta -da! Le chateau. The windows are typically Renaissance. They're large, they let much more light in than the tiny windows of the Middle Age. That's very easy to recognize. If you see tiny windows put in the weirdest places, like in a corner or something, where you think it makes no sense on the facade, you're very likely looking at a middle age window because at that time they didn't plan how to put the windows. They just made a hole wherever they needed light at a given moment. Whereas in the Renaissance period, they started planning the windows as part of the, of the features of the architecture. So they start in the center and then on each side, left and right, they allocate very large windows, evenly spaced um, all over the facade. That's typically a Renaissance facade. Think of castles like Versailles, Chambord, Vaux-le-Vicomte. My house is a lot smaller than these, of course, but some of its features are similar to what you see in Renaissance castles because it was the style at that time. For example, high wooden ceilings à la française. Well, these are painted, they look even fancier. Mine are not painted. In the living rooms, chimneys that were not meant for cooking anymore, but for heating and for the family to gather around and spend time together. Beds à la duchesse, meaning that the roof is suspended. Beds à la française, where the roof is supported by four pillars in the four corners of the bed. A bit much for my taste. <laughs> the walls were typically covered with jacquard tapestry and or wooden panels, which was actually a great trick to not only decorate the wall, but also to hide the saltpeter issue or when the wall wasn't quite straight. Honestly, I really wanted to visit the kitchen in that castle because I love kitchens. It's always my favorite part to see in a castle. And also I have a kitchen to renovate. <laughs> but unfortunately uh, in Grignan, the kitchens are now closed to the public. So I couldn't see that, which is okay because the following weekend I went to montbrun les bains which is another one um, on the list of the most beautiful villages in France. Provence has many of these, as I learned.
accueille les soirs. Mon brun est un peu plus haut dans les montagnes, donc là, le gras est en fait green plus grand et les arbres survivent le sommet. J'ai trouvé ça super cool. Le vieux village est surtout accessible par le foot, pas de cars. Il y a des fontaines et des washhouses à chaque coin. Ici, c'est la chambre de l'eau. Not much water, but still. Narrow streets to keep the shade, absolutely lovely. Place de l'apéro, ah, parfait, parfait, two chairs. I stayed at a bed and breakfast, which turned out to be an excellent source of inspiration in a more countryside direction, as I explained in the beginning. I like the vintage bathtub a lot. It's standing on a floor made of plain wood. The corridors are kept raw and uneven. The old tiles are a typical Provence pattern. There is a lot done quite right in this place. Mm. I want one like this. Follow your dreams, they know the way. I know that's the way to breakfast. It's all about the details. The metal basket with burlap cloth at breakfast, the old coffee grinder. I have one similar to this actually. The garden design was a dream. There was even a path leading to a little river. And all this little path smells so good. Thanks to these flowers. Yay! in which I went and dipped my feet, and the water was surprisingly cold. You know, it's the little moments like this, when I realize how lucky I am that I landed in Provence, that it's what I was looking for, and also everything that I hoped for. You know, despite the renovation thing coming up, which is gonna be a huge project, Um, I'm well aware of it, despite the headache when I'm going to realize that what I have in mind does not fit my budget and that we need to compromise, as the architect are already telling me. <laughs> All that doesn't matter. You know, my, my grandfather, who was a wise man, used to sit down, take a deep breath, have a look around, and then say, aren't we lucky to be here? And then, you know, when one person in the group says that, The whole group realizes, yeah, he's right. We are lucky. All right, next time I will show you more of the house, but today is a, a, a tiny bit too hot for that. I will stay in the shade and try to like move slowly and not to sweat. <laughs> See you soon, take care.